Hi and welcome. I am Vipul Mittal and in this session I will discuss allowance for credit losses. So you sell goods to your customers on credit. These customers become your account receivable because you have sold goods to the customers on credit. Now, there is a possibility that some of the customers may not pay you back. Some of the customers become bad. There is a risk of bad debts. There is a risk of credit loss. There is a possibility that some of the customers may not pay you for the goods that they have bought on credit. That some of the customers do not pay you back. You create an allowance for credit losses. You do accounting in accordance with guidance in accounting standard codification 326. So guidance in topic 326 of accounting standard codification asks you to create an allowance for credit losses because there is a risk of bad debts. You give loan. Let's say you give loan to X company, again, there is a risk that the entire amount may not be recovered from X company or some amount may not be recovered from X company. There is a risk of bad debt again. What do you do? You create an allowance for credit losses. So when you create an allowance for credit losses, you correspondingly record an expense that is credit loss expense. So there is a risk of credit loss. And for that, you create an allowance for credit losses. All right. And we do the accounting in accordance with guidance in topic 326 of accounting standard codification. And what it says, an entity should measure expected credit losses on financial assets measured at amortized cost. So in respect of financial assets that are measured at amortized cost, not at fair value. There are certain financial assets that are measured at fair value. For example, investment in trading securities, those are financial assets measured at fair value. We are not talking about that. We are talking about financial assets measured at amortized cost. So you have, for example, account receivable, certain loans, your investment in held to maturity securities. All these are financial assets that are measured at amortized cost. And in respect of these financial assets, you record an allowance for credit losses. An entity should record an allowance for credit losses on financial assets and should correspondingly record a credit loss expense. So record an allowance for credit losses and correspondingly also record a credit loss expense for its current estimate of expected credit losses. So you can only estimate the expected credit losses. So this is the estimate regarding expected credit losses. You create an allowance and correspondingly record an expense. So for example, well, let's say we are talking about the only financial asset the entity has that is account receivable and its account receivable are $100,000. And the entity estimates its expected credit losses of $5,000, let's say. So it records a journal entry that is credit loss expense, debit, and allowance for credit losses, credit. This estimate is $5,000 and corresponding amount goes to credit loss expense. And this is presented on balance sheet. This is how you're going to present account receivable on balance sheet. Let's say this is for year 
five. Let's talk about year six. For year six, account receivable are one twenty thousand dollars. Management's current estimate of allowance for credit losses is seven thousand dollars, and the existing balance is only five thousand dollars. So you create more allowance. Allowance for credit losses, credit two thousand dollars, two thousand more allowance is needed. Corresponding adjustment is done to credit loss expense. This goes to income statement. This goes to balance sheet. So this is how you present on balance sheet. All right. Let's move to year seven. Account receivable or one forty thousand dollars. And management's current estimate of expected credit losses is only three thousand dollars. So an allowance for credit losses of only three thousand dollars is needed. And the existing allowance is seven thousand dollars. So four thousand allowance is not needed. You will do a reversal of this. Allowance for credit losses will be a debit now. And corresponding adjustment will be to reversal of credit loss expense. How you show this on balance sheet? So you measure expected credit losses and create an allowance for credit losses and you do this as per the guidance in topic accounting standard codification 326. All right, students, there's more on allowance for credit losses. Watch more videos on allowance for credit losses to get a complete understanding. We'll connect again. Goodbye.